Hey folks, welcome to Fireflies Follies. I hope that you enjoy the video today. If you do, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. It really does help my channel out a lot. If you haven't subscribed yet, I hope that you will and that you'll stick around for a while. So today I'm going to show you how I dehydrate potato slices for long-term shelf-stable storage. Now I'm sure that you have probably seen the box mixes in the stores for au gratin potatoes and scallop potatoes. Basically, that's what I'm doing. I use these in casseroles. They rehydrate really well. And they make amazing scalloped and au gratin potatoes. So, I am going to... I'm using Yukon Golds, just because that's what was on sale. I've done the regular russets. I've done reds. I've, I've done just about all of them. And it's just whatever happens to be on sale. They, they all rehydrate really well. So I'm going to get potatoes peeled and I, I've scrubbed them, I'm peeling them, I'm putting them in cold water and once I get them all peeled then I'm going to get the slicer and I'll slice them really thin. I'll bring, you back, I'll, I'll bring you back when I start that so we can talk about how thick they are. So this is the last potato and let me just tell you this is sold as an apple core peeler and it has this little blade that attaches to the front of it that has a hole and as you spin your apple through it it spiral slices your apple and takes the core out of it. This thing is amazing for peeling and coring and slicing apples but if you take that removable blade off it is amazing for peeling potatoes, sweet potatoes. I have peeled zucchini and squash and cucumbers on this thing. I absolutely love it. and. I have arthritis in my hands, so to sit with a peeler or a knife and peel 10 or 20 pounds of potatoes or apples at a time is just not something I can do so well anymore. So this is one of the best gifts I've ever gotten, and they're not expensive. I will leave a link in the description below if it's something that you're interested in. So I'm going to get this last one peeled, and all right, so I've got the last one done. I'm going to drop it into the water and I am going to transfer them over into another pan. I'm going to go get the slicer. I'm going to clean up a little bit and I will bring you back and we will get these sliced up. So I'm back and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lob off the ends basically into this bowl. Knock out any spots that didn't quite get. A little peel isn't going to hurt anything. And then I'm going to put these in my Vegematic. And I'm going to slice them. And what this gives me is uniform slices. Well, if I get them separated here. It gives me uniform slices. And I think that's a little thick. I think I'm actually going to switch it to the skinnier blade real quick. So 
let's do another one. Now I have a kettle of water or a pot of water over here that I've got coming up to a boil. There's nothing in it, it's just water. So again, I'm going to take the very end off where it didn't peel. I'm going to drop it in the slicer. Let's check that thickness. That's more like it. So, uniform thickness. And what I'm going to do now, I'm using this is called a Vegematic. They're not very expensive. They come with a couple of different slicing blades and a couple of different oops, a couple of different diet size dicing blades, and then it also comes with an apple core insert that goes into it. And this just makes uniform slices or dices or chops. I use it quite a bit. I, I will admit I've gotten very accustomed to having it handy for me to use. And some of these need just a little more peel taken off of them. And I'll leave a link in the description for this below if you're interested in getting one. They are very handy to have. They're a little noisy, but it just snaps it right through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these sliced up. I'm going to get them into the pot. We're going to blanch them. Once it comes up to a boil, I'm going to blanch them for five minutes. And then I'm going to scoop them out. I've got a bowl of very cold water sitting in the fridge, and I will grab it as I take them out and shock them. So we're going to slice them, we're going to blanch them for about five or six minutes, then we're going to shock them in cold water to stop the cooking process, and then we're going to put them on the dehydrator. So I will be back to talk to you in just a bit. Okay, one thing that I want to just remind you of, to keep your potatoes from turning brown while you are slicing between batches, you just need to put them in a bowl, make sure that they are completely covered by cold water, and they can sit for a little while. It's not going to hurt them. Wouldn't hurt them if they sat out without being in water. They would just turn brown and be rather unappealing. So just a reminder of that. And I am going to, these are almost up to a boil. Once they have boiled for about five or six minutes, I will bring you back and I'll show you how we stop the process. And then I'm going to take you next door to my dining room and we will put them on the dehydrator and get them going. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, potatoes have blanched for five minutes, five and a half now. I grabbed my cold water out of the refrigerator and you can put you can do ice water I don't have any ice trays so I'm just doing super cold water and we're just gonna drop those right in and that will stop the cooking process and cool them down enough to get them hand, cool enough I can handle them now the reason for blanching because this is not really cooking them. It is, but it's not. Um, they're still raw potatoes. So the reason for blanching them before they go on to the dehydrator is because if you don't, they will oxidize. They will turn this ugly, ugly brown color. And that doesn't go away when you rehydrate them. But if you blanch them, they will come back 
a beautiful potato color. Right, everything out of there. All right, so I'm going to put this next batch in and let them go while we put these on the dehydrator. Okay, so this is my dining room slash office. I work from home now, along with most of the world, and my office took over half of my dining room. But I've turned my small kitchen table into an appliance center. So my air fryer's here, my stand mixer is here, and my dehydrator lives here. So let me get you over here where you can kind of see. Now I brought the potatoes over and they have cooled down enough that I can handle them. They're still warm, but they're not hot. And I don't need the liners, but I store my dehydrator with the liners in the trays. I'm not going to take them out. I'm just going to leave them. Won't hurt anything. Now, I'm just going to lay these out in a single layer. And fill all five trays. Now, I use the Easy Dry Digital. And I've had this dehydrator for years. They don't even make it anymore. They have a new version of it, and I can leave a link for it in the description box if it's one that you're interested in getting, if they have them back in stock. But what I typically do is I fill my trays, I stack them in, and I estimate how long I think it's going to take. And I rotate my trays at least twice so that the bottom comes to the top and the middle goes down twice. That way they circulate a little bit. The air seems to circulate a little better and they dry a little better, in my opinion. I could be making it up. Who knows? It's just the way I've always done it. So I'm going to get these trays filled. Looks like the next batch is just about done. So I'm going to go get them. I'm going to get some more sliced, get them, get some more processed, and finish filling trays. Okay, 10 pound bag of potatoes gave me five full trays of potato rounds. So I'm going to get those on the dehydrator. get the lid on. And I'm going to set this for 12 hours. I'll check them in four. I'll check them again in eight. It may take longer than 12 hours. And I'm going to run these. I'm going to start them at 145 for at least two or three hours because they're pretty wet. So I'm going to run them at 145 for two or three hours and then I'll check them. I might turn them down to 135 depending on how they're going. So once these are completely done and they're ready to come off, I will bring you back and I will show you how they turned out. Okay, I am back and the potatoes are finished dehydrating. Now these ran about 16 hours. These were sliced a little bit thick. So, and this is what you're looking for. They are dry. They are brittle and hard. So what I'm going to do, and I had a couple of thicker slices. I'll check those when I get to them. I am going to take them off the trays and put them into jars. And these little silicone liners just make it so easy. And they stayed, not sure how well you can see that my lighting over here is not great. They stayed a beautiful golden color. They didn't oxidize or turn ugly brown or anything like that.
Okay, so here is one of the really thick ones that I didn't think was going to be dry, and it's not. This one is also not. It's got a little give there in the middle so you can tell that it's not dry. It's another one. Those were those very first ones that I sliced that were too thick. Okay, so I have to get a lid for this one, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to condition them. And what that means is you keep them out where you can see them and at least once or twice a day you give them a shake in the jar just to redistribute them and you watch for any signs of moisture. Any little misty, cloudy looking areas, especially around the shoulder of the jar, which is where you typically see it or most commonly see it. I will put them back on the dehydrator and let them run for three or four more hours and then I'll start the conditioning process again. Now once they've sat out for a good solid week and I am confident that they are completely dry, then I'll add them to what I keep in my pantry and I keep them in a gallon jar in the pantry. Started with 10 pounds of potatoes in a giant bag and we are down to what will fit inside a gallon glass jar. And these are good on your shelf. I will vacuum seal mine. You can put oxygen absorbers in them. You can store them in Mylar bags, and these rehydrate so well. I make au gratin potatoes and scallop potatoes with them, and I also make um, potato cheeseburger casserole with them, which I really, really like. It's one of my favorite casseroles. So I will, the next time I make it, I'll make a video so you can see how well these dehydrate. I really hope that you enjoyed the video today. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really does help my channel out a lot. If you haven't subscribed yet, I hope that you will and that you'll stick around for a while. If you hit the notification bell, YouTube should notify you when I upload a new video based on your settings. Thank you so much for watching today. Have a great day.